Thanks for staying with us. Now, cryptocurrency have long been discussed and debated, but they are only now coming to light as financial tools that can be accessible and useful to more than only die-hard connoisseurs. Now, cryptocurrencies have potential to enable social and economic growth th throughout the world, including um, developing countries by offering easier access to capital and financial services. Cryptocurrencies have a highly utilitarian yet also disrupting quality that has slowly but steadily started to interfere with the way the traditional financial system works. Now, little wonder why the CBN has banned, you know, I mean, CBN ban rather was announced. So um, that's our conversation to, for today. But let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 8038 So, um, Maury, so because both of us, we are, <laughs> let me not assume you are like me that don't know, that don't know Jack. Before I bring in, I added DG. What do you even know at all about cryptocurrency? Like, I, I, I really do not buy into it because of the rumors that I've heard, but I don't know how true it is. I kind of heard that it's an illegal way, you know, to, <laughs> to hide money or to, like, like, even if you're doing, like, illegal business and you don't want, like, people to be able to track you, yeah. you know, just use, just say, pay me in crypto instead. Don't send it to the bank so that the government will not be able to, and I can, you know, hide this. So because of that, yeah, no, it's only God that I have. I don't, I don't have that. Anything that I struggle, I don't wish to smile on the side. But that's just a general idea that I have of. Okay, so I like what you've said because the press release that uh, CBN um, released um, responds to the regulatory directive on cryptocurrency. It says many countries, um, central bank, international um, financial institutions, and distinguished investigators and economists have warned against the use of cryptocurrency. That's part of what is in the body of the press release that they, they, they sent. Now, they said there's, um, with cryptocurrencies, you can find loss of investment, money laundry, Terror, um, terrorism, financing, um, illicit funds flow, criminal activities. And they also said in that letter that China, you know, had banned the use of um, cryptocurrency. And they also um, mentioned um, the billionaire Warren Buffett, saying that it's a rat poison squad and um, gambling, it's a gambling device and it's a mirage. So um, they are trying to see how, I mean, banning this uh, cryptocurrency using um within their banks, is a way of protecting the financial system. That's if you read the body of that press release that CBN uh, released, seventh of, um, uh, that's yesterday, 7th of, um, of February. So those were the, 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 the things that I picked out from there. I would love to hear from our guests. So let me bring in Ade Deji um, Owo Nibi. He's a forensic investigation practitioner and certified blockchain slash cryptocurrency forensic investigator with more than 15 years of experience across few banks within the Nigerian financial sector and educator in corporate workplace setting. Now, Deji is uniquely qualified and involved in forensics analysis of financial infrastructures, um, cryptocurrency crimes, and designing plans that work for government, regulators, and law enforcement agencies. And you've been hearing his laughter in the background. As he's joined us via Zoom live in Abuja. Thank you so much, Ade Deji, for joining us. <laughs> Thank you, Owa. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you so, so much. So you couldn't help yourself. You were just laughing and laughing. Me and Mori, we are novices in this cryptocurrency yeah, matter. Yeah, a, a lot of <laughs> you guys are not far away from the majority of people. Yeah. You know, because of course, of course, you are, you are, people are meant to run with rumors, uh, run with what people say, and it's a bit complex for the ordinary to go into. And um, so it's a legitimate fear, it's a legitimate concern. And uh, what Mori was saying, I had to laugh because that is the greater percentage of people that is the stand. Mm -hmm. But what we're trying to say is learn it, get to know it, and this is a guaranteed money for the future. It's a natural step for, less, for money, and wow. we all have to be in that space. Oh, all right, so um, let us start with that CBN press release first that said, you know, that listed so many things about lost of investment, money laundry, terrorism financing, illicit funds flow, criminal activities, as part of the, the reasons that they are, you know, trying to bring up this issue of banning their banks from doing transactions. I mean, with cryptocurrency, does it really pose a risk, right, to um, the economy, or is it supposed to impact positively to the economy? 
Uh, I think it is a two-edged sword. Uh, it, it, it is a two-edged sword in the sense that you can actually sway to any direction that uh, people choose to take it to. Uh, it exact, for example, if you, your money, of course, people make money legitimately. Uh, people collect money in the church as offering. People also collect the same money as kidnap ransom. Uh, you know, so, so it all depends. And anything that has to do with value, you find these two categories of people uh, within that space. And uh, unfortunately, um, based on the body language of regulators, board of body language of government, board of body language of law enforcement, they have left this space ungoverned. And therefore, criminal found a nest and a very beautiful place to hibernate and do all sort. Mm -hmm. So, of course, yes, because they also have with 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 um, you know hiding who is behind a particular transaction. Yeah. Because if you do your transaction, for instance, with Zenith Bank, with GT Bank, with our conventional bank, they know who are who is transacting with me. But in, in in case of cryptocurrency, you just have some cryptographic hashes and some other you know alphanumeric numbers uh, you know that you also have and you transfer to the next person and nobody knows it's Mr. Deji that is sending to Maureen, for instance, and uh, you have to use a deeper tool to get down to who actually is behind it. But it's not uh, a very difficult thing. It's, it's a problem that has been solved. Uh, like you did mention earlier, I'm a, I'm a cryptocurrency forensic investigator, so we can actually tag faces and entities to particular cryptographic you know, characters that are used to represent transfers and all that. So I, I, I think yeah, CBN fear is legitimate, but of course there are tools to help you know, curtail that, uh, those fears and help them also allay the whole, whole fear that they are having within the whole team. But I think it's an avenue they haven't uh, properly explored, and probably that is why they felt okay. And this is not new to Central Bank, like they did put it in their memo. Uh, China banned it in 2017. But that doesn't stop anything because China currently, are, if not the highest holders of this, maybe second or third, you know, mm -hmm. they are buying it up every day, you know. So uh, it's not to ban it, uh, but I believe the China government will realize, and I think they have done a very fast one to do their own, to mimic that cryptocurrency in communal world called central bank digital currency. So they have now digital yuan renminbi to make sure that things are done and also facilitate those faster, uh, transaction and cheap transaction like most of the people that use cryptocurrency want to push forward as the argument why uh, that is being used. All right, Maury, do you want to come in here? Okay, so I know that um, if, if you were saying that you are able to put a face, you know, or put a name to the people who, you know, deal in cryptocurrency, doesn't that like defeat the whole entire purpose of using cryptocurrency instead of normal um, bank transactions? Also, because you know, with everything, there's good and the bad. Would you say that the good of the of of dealing in crypto outweighs the bad, or you know, what's your take on it? In that? Yes, my take here, I would say the good is actually far, 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 far more than the bad. You know, like take for instance now, um, a lot of cases in Nigeria, kidnap and all that, and I can only pinpoint as a professional in this field that I've been able to just investigate, be involved in investigating just one cryptocurrency uh, ransom payment in Nigeria. So meaning people are still paying with normal Naira. In, in the massively, people are paying tens of thousands in different Nigerian banks as it stands today. And people are not actually utilizing the cryptocurrency yet. But it's happening around the globe. And I did, I did mention most of the fora that I have to go. I say, look, as uh, regulators, we have to quickly step into this space before the bad actors take position. Uh, because if they are the first movers, we only do catch up. And government regulators, law enforcement, we always do catch up. The criminals will take their first move, they'll perfect their art before they begin to see, oh, we shouldn't leave them. We should jump in and actually make sure, you know, that we, we investigate the whole thing. So, but yes, there are negative things, but to answer your question in a straightforward way, the positive are uh, seriously outweigh. Uh, the negative things that are put out there in the media. Okay, so Adedeji, let me come back to a, a, a layman's um, question. What is the difference between cryptocurrency, dealing with cryptocurrency, and Forex? Is there a similarity or they are completely different? They are different. Forex is our normal Naira, our normal dollar, our normal UN, our normal uh, British pounds, 
euro and all that. Yeah. Those are just the just foreign 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 yeah, currencies. Currencies, yeah. You know, so people that trade them just trade these peers. You know, they just trade these foreign currencies that is maybe trading US dollar against the British pound and all mm -hmm. that. So it's a completely different uh, terrain. This particular one is. It's digital money. It does not exist. It's not, it's not issued out by any central authority. It does not have head office, no CEO to it. It runs just on the internet and empowering people to transfer value at the click of button from anywhere in the world. It does not have a country. It's denationalized. So therefore, we don't have this country, this crypto for Nigeria, crypto for all that. And that is why... Um, um, the central banks around the world felt, okay, our own comp competitive edge is to come up with our own alternative to this. Uh, looking at the way our, our citizens are embracing this to come out with what we call the central bank digital currency, meaning every country goes in onto the blockchain, issue this whole currency and allow it to function as on legal tender backed by the authorities of individual country to make sure it competes with this money running on the blockchain. But of course, we are not there yet. Nigeria is, one of, is not one of the countries that is even thinking about the CBDC yet. I'm not sure of that. But of course, that is the next big thing for every central bank to do instead of banning it. Well, did this is what you just said now. Is that not where the risk is, um, is completely? Because this is a completely decentralized, um, what's it called, um, trading, where it is done freely across borders. There's no barrier. There's nothing. Is that not where the risk lies? You know, where, I mean, somebody can just defraud me from anywhere. Is that not why the central bank is decide, is trying to find a way to put a, a, a stop to it, you know, to ban it? Because as quickly, as easy as it is for me to trade, it's also easy for me to be defrauded as well. Or are there regulatory Absolutely. bodies that, that, um, that um, governs the, the use of cryptocurrency around the world? No. Uh, okay, Maureen, you want to say something? <laughs> No, no, no. I was just trying to say no. Like, according to what you said, I don't yeah. think there's a body that governs it. It's just something that's in the air. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's self-governed. And um, we just jump into it and um, we get the value from individual currency. Take Bitcoin, for example. It's created by, a, by an anonymous person that nobody knows who he is. We just know it's Satoshi Nakamoto. And um, he started this idea that, okay, people... People, governments have control over money and they choose to enrich who they think they want to enrich. And whoever Satoshi Nakamoto is, maybe it's an individual, maybe they are a group of people, maybe they are individual government, we don't know. A male or female, we don't know. But that, this particular person, you know, belongs to a group called what we call cyberpunk. The people that believe they should be liberalized, there should not be restriction, you know, and on you transferring money from one end to another. And they started this... Um, uh, cryptocurrency code development with some of his friends. They just exchange via email, oh, I'm doing ABC, test this and see if it works and all that. And around 2009, they perfected to make sure that we can actually send it. As at that time, he has an idea that we just want to create a peer-to-peer -peer electronic money that is beyond the control of any central government. Mm. And that is the whole thing from the beginning mm. of it. Mm -hmm. And um, as it is today, that be, even central bank they said they can tell you we cannot ban Bitcoin. But well, we can stop our bank from interacting with such people that trade with it, but they cannot buy. It's, it's safe running for the past 10 years, you know. Okay, you so know, it has been safe running, no server down, no hacker can hack it. And so it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a super technology that people began to look at other things they can use to actually apply that technology in different sectors. So today, after that first making of you know, making money to run on the internet. People began to also use it for other economic activities, like uh, that is having impact in Nigeria. Yeah, economy. so that was where I was coming to. So, can you run us through? Because we hear that Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies have been in um, people have been trading since two thousand and nine, right? So, what has been the impact, you know, in the Nigerian economy? How has Bitcoin, you know, helped to to build boost the economy? Like if you if you ask this question, for instance, in the Nigerian uh, blockchain and cryptocurrency ecosystem, uh, a lot of young people. Let me give you a, one single example. I was I was I was uh, a beneficiary sometime in October last year uh, because I use cryptocurrency. I just woke up in the morning and one particular cryptocurrency said, "Oh, people that are using my cryptocurrency, I'm dashing everybody 500 uni. They call them Uniswap." And as at that time, Uniswap was around three dollar. I, I remember selling it and cashing out around six, seven hundred thousand naira just in the morning for, from nowhere. And every Nigerian young man that is interacting with that got that. 
As a matter of fact, yesterday I was, called, I was interacting with a friend and he said, I didn't sell mine. And as at yesterday, it has shoot up to over $10,000 what? That's the free thing. That is what the federal government is not giving you palliative as a young man, but mm. they are getting it. A lot of people are trading legitimately, uh, making money, making living, marrying, building houses, buying cars, and because no restriction to entry into, to do those things. So it's boosting the economy because those are people that will have been terrorists, they will have been robbers within the country, but it's actually having thousands, if not millions of them doing legitimate trade. But of course, there are others also that, be, that believe and that is not what they want to use it for. They want to go ahead and actually commit crime with it, defraud people, scam people, get, you know, a lot of things. And we see that every day. I, like, like you did mention, I am involved with cryptocurrency investigations. Mm. And we get, even as of today, even this afternoon, we got, we got some, some banks, I think a mini bank calling us to say, oh, we've been defrauded with millions of, of Naira and we saw it went into crypto, you help us track it. We're getting that every time, mm. every time. Can I, can I quickly come in? Yeah, go ahead, Maury. In a, in a case of theft or fraud, you know, somebody dupes you um, via, um, under the guise of crypto, what is the first step to take? Is there, is there anything, is there any remedy that can be done or if your money goes, your money has gone? <laughs> well, like, like, like with anything, I would say protect your money because if you go, story follows, right? <laughs> <laughs> So story follows, but is there, again, that is where the challenge lies, right? That is where we have the challenge, uh, because for instance, if you take our firm, we are the we are the only, if not you know, the only cryptocurrency forensic investigating firm within African subregion. Hmm. So and these things can happen in every country. It can be South Africa, it can be in Kenya, it can be it's borderless. So here, but in Nigeria, we have been assisting people that lost money. We've been able to help them actually recover with the help of law enforcement. The challenge is this. Our law enforcement officers should be the front point, like to answer your question directly. You report to the police when somebody steals your money. But in this case now, when you report to the police, the police have no idea how this money runs. Mm. So you are left, you know, helpless. How about EFCC? Sense. So that is why most of the people just come to us and say, okay, this is what has happened to me. Can you help us investigate? We investigate. And most of the time we investigate, we track it to a particular place and we give it out to law enforcement. They have no idea how to go further. So that is why it's not banning it, it's learning it and also be take a step forward to see how they can curtail these bad actors. Because if, the, if, you, if a thief knows there's no police in the town, you can imagine the lawlessness that will be happening there. So it's the same thing. Everybody believes that nobody, the police cannot check, the law enforcement do not have capacity to investigate. They don't know how this money runs. So, of course, as a criminal, I will choose Nigeria as my own little place to hibernate because mm. a good place that nobody's going to check me. Yeah. So that's why we've been engaging law enforcement. We've been engaging the central bank itself. We've been engaging a lot of people to say, okay, this is the time to key into this thing, learn it properly, and there are tools to actually help you remove the bad actors from this space. And why the legitimate people that are boosting the economy should let should be allowed to, to actually continue doing the economic activity legally within, within uh, Nigeria. Uh, absolutely, Adedeji. I'm just wondering, EFCC, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, they should be trained in, in cryptocurrency so that they can chase, they can chase the, the criminals. Yeah, we, we, yeah, we actually, we actually have, have uh, contacted a lot of them. And you know, you know, you know um, the, the opportunities are very massive. It is not, it is not uh, a thing of joy for me to say, okay, when, when I qualify as a cryptocurrency forensic investigator and they're saying, oh, you're the first in Africa, I felt, no, it shouldn't be. We should have a lot of people, especially in Nigeria, we should have the EFCC, or EFCC officers qualifying. Mm -hmm. We should have a lot of police officers qualifying so they will be in this game before the criminals take over. Absolutely. So when anything happens, you know, like, like I've attended a series of training, you know, where you have the CIA, the FBI, the Europol, I've been there. And we all train us together in how to track this thing, and they make it a big deal. Mm. You know, they do this training all weeks, all, you know, everybody knows the new things. Because even the cryptocurrency thing lives like, like a normal life. It, it, it metamorphosed from what you know yesterday. Today it changes, new things coming. Mm. So, you know, there, you, there are many ways even to obfuscate the normal process we know. So every day the law enforcement need to know it. Um, the regulators need to know it. And in that sense, because they know they can investigate it, so they will give comfort to people using it. And if you dare do any bad thing, they can also, also fish you out with the competences they have developed. So I did, you said something very interesting, that you just woke up one morning and 700K was in your account. <laughs> now here am I, I'm smiling. Why am I smiling? Because some have argued that um, 
this cryptocurrency is enabling youth become financially stronger, right? And without control yeah. and without the control of the government. And this might shake the poli the politics, right, for 2023. Given that even there are some corners that have said that when the CBN started clamping down of, on or, or, or um, clamping down the account numbers of youth during the NSAS protest, Bitcoin and the cryptocurrencies were now the medium where m funds were be tr um, was being transferred to these young people. So I'm just wondering, is there a political undertone to some of this ban that we're getting from CBN, or is just maybe a genuine fear that they cannot control, you know, um, the outcome of how the Bitcoin, I mean, sorry, the cryptocurrency would empower the young people, given that it is mainly young people that are involved in trading these um, cryptocurrencies? Well, the disconnection, the disconnection here is, is not as if um, the government is scared of the young people getting economically empowered. I don't see any political uh, undertone to it. I think there's a missing link somewhere. And the missing link is simply that the government have not developed capacity to investigate people that are using it negatively. Mm. And if you ask me, because I don't care what you do with cryptocurrency, I'm going to tell you we can fish you out. Mm. And as simple as that. So if you have 100 people using it, and I know I can fish out bad actors that contravene the, the instant laws in the country where I operate, I can fish them out. Of course, I will leave it out. The fear is this, because we have not developed capacities for people to actually know there are tools. For instance, there are tools to monitor your, your transactions in the back. There are tools to know who your customers are. There are tools to know how to investigate you if you do any fraud, scam, or whatever it is on the blockchain. There are a lot of tools that we use. We, of course, we don't have any crystal ball to do this. We use tools to unravel things that people believe is not possible to use. And that is why I believe the point here is for government to go back to drawing board, you know, begin to build capacity around understanding this whole technology, uh, because it's not going to go away to start with. It has come to stay. It's going to be here forever. There's no idea that will make it vanish. So the earlier we begin to build capacity around people, you know, investigating it, uh, people able, able, excuse me, uh, <laughs> people able also to, to do most of the positive things on the blockchain with it, you know, check out who are doing bad things, uh, who are doing positive things, the earlier for us all. Absolutely. So I believe the government should build capacity instead. All right. So we're going to take a very short break. When we return, we'll continue the conversation and take your comments. Stay with us. We'll be right back.